Hello there. I'm John and welcome to our 369th art tutorial where we showcase amazing artists from around the world and ask them to share some of their tips and techniques to help you improve. Today we'll be in England with professional artist Andrew Geeson where he'll be painting some loose and vibrant beetroots uh, using watercolour. Uh, this class is a prelude to Andrew's longer paid for art workshop next month where we'll be painting a beautiful ladybug and daisy scene step by step more about that later so without further ado let's travel to Andrew now as we journey to Andrew you can find the relevant reference painting and sketch as well as recommended art materials on our website there's a direct link to the class info in the description below if you want to find out more about Andrew you can also check out our tutors page and give you a little bit of a bio there journey down yes I think I can see Andrew he's rushing in from his garden hello Andrew hi there John hi hi I've just got some leaves on my shoulders but um, I just got <laughs> here in time absolutely perfect well, it's lovely to be hosting you. This is the first time we've hosted you, and I'm excited to showcase uh, you as you're known as a loose floral artist who's who's just great fun in your art workshops. Would you say that's how you describe yourself? I think I couldn't have put it better myself, John. Um, yes, I like to have fun because it keeps everything um, nice, fresh, vibrant, alive, and uh, I think that can translate so easily into the painting. So how you feel is how it comes out of the paintbrush and I think it just, uh, it shows um, both through enjoyment and um, the uh, end product as well. So uh, yes, I would say that's very fair. Very good, very good. And you also live just a few miles away from another of our loose water colourists, Jane Bettridge. So I guess there must be just um, something in the water in, in Leicestershire. I think I think there must be John. The stream, the, the streams around here are flowing with the uh, uh, loose watercolours. So, uh, <laughs> and James no. just over the hill. I, I can see her waving at the moment. <laughs> That's brilliant. Well, I can't wait to get started. Uh, before we do, a quick thirty-second word on how today's live event is going to work. So, first of all, we're going to walk through the prep, and this might include talking about the the process, the sketch, or the first layers. Then we'll take a pause in the middle and look at some examples of Andrew's previous works of art for a bit of inspiration, as well as talk about what we're going to be doing in this upcoming workshop next month. And then finally, we'll complete the tutorial, after which you're more than welcome to share what you've done on the post for today's class on our Facebook page, or even easier via our patron WhatsApp group. Uh, links for these are also in the description below. So let's now get back to Andrew and we'll start putting paint to paper back with you Andrew thanks John thanks for the introduction there and uh, welcome folks thank you so much for uh, taking the time to drop by today to see um, about uh, beetroot buddies beetroot they're, uh, buddies. Friends. <laughs> that's great they're ideal and um, I'm going to go through the drawing for a start uh, as John said the reference is available there and you, uh, you could have pre-done that quite easily, but I'll just show you my quick method. And it is a very quick, speedy process that I do, both in drawing and in painting. So most things are completed within an hour, and um, it's really down to the step-by-steps -step and the simple idea of how to do it. So uh, if you're uh, ready, guys, I'm ready. Pencil's ready. Let's go for it. Okay. So... 140 pound cold pressed paper, nice and flat. So we've got the three beetroot, three buddies. Always best to have three buddies. Let's have a little look, a bit more there. Perfect. Okay, so what I do is a dot dash method, yeah? So what I do is put little dots down for a start. So this is the width of my beetroot just here. That's the width, there's dots. That's gonna be the general dimension and a few little dots just to guide me, yeah? Very simple. You might not see them on the screen, but believe me, they are there. And I use the dots just as a little guide method to get my beetroot shape, yeah? So I'm not doing it freehand, I'm not doing a thousand lines, just a very, very simple way to break down the object into a simple form. Got a little stem here, where do I want to go to? About there. I want it to go here and here, just backwards and forwards. There we go. 
very simple. Yeah. So there's beetroot number one. His name's Brian, and um, he's got a little chiquicento in red, I believe. Right. So little stems that go out the top of the beetroot, just simple lines. So much of this is just done in the, allowing the paint to flow about. So there is beetroot number one. We've got one just looking over the top there. Again, I put little dots down for the width, the depth. Even though this is in the way, that doesn't matter. Bringing the line round over the top. There we go. And a few little stems as well. Yeah. And it's a quick process. And the way you'll actually get good at this is repetition. Get the knowledge and then do it a lot. As with anything in life, repetition will get you there. Yeah. Okay, little stems again. So two beetroots already drawn. Beetroot number three, width, depth, little dots again. Yeah. Broken line, very useful. If you do a very if you do a perfect line, a solid line in this approach to watercolours, it's actually quite restrictive. There's the end of that little stem there, yeah. Down we go, round, round the corner. And also I'll put a few little direction lines as well. So this is a little curve just to show me the contours of the beetroot. So each one will change slightly because of the way it's placed. That one's straight on. This is slightly to the side. This one's coming this way. Little stems. That's all you've got. And then what about a, a bit of leafage, yeah? Proper word, designed by me about 12 seconds ago. <laughs> Generally, I'm looking for the area that the foliage of the beetroots cover, not individual leaves, nothing like that. Just looking at the overall amalgamation of leaves. That is enough. Swirling the pencil round, feeling loose both in movement of the pencil and in your mind as well. Don't start thinking, I've got to put a leaf there, I've got to put a leaf there. Allow it to happen organically, really. That's the simplest way. Okay, so there's the drawing, guys. There is the drawing already done. Complete a vous, si vous play. I even speak French, yeah? <laughs> right. So, drawing done, guys. Now then, a little bit of paint. I've got my palette all ready. Nice big flat palette, clean for a change. This is a bit of a rarity for an artist, but um, I've got my paints all laid out in a line, yeah? So I can easily get to them, I can draw them out, I can use as much paint or as little paint as I actually need for the particular part of the painting. So paints all ready, we've got a list there all pre-done. Don't worry if you've not got exactly the same paints as me, it's not vital because a lot of the paint, a lot of the work is done in the mixing. Brushes I'm going to use are these guys. So I've got a large rigger brush that I call Miss Rigger. I've got silly names for everything in my life. Miss Rigger is a large rigger brush. I've got uh, Big Brian, which is a large round-ended brush, about size 16. I've got two dagger brushes, which is a large one, Dangerous Dave, size 14, and Little Mini Dave, about a size 8. Okay? Loose gang. They're the boys. Right. Everything prepared, drawing done. This is so speedy, guys. This is so speedy. So if you're ready to start getting a little bit of paint on, then come with me. I'm going to start off with large round brush, Big Brian, and I'm going to start with a little bit of water on the brush. Now, it's not soaked. It's about half full of water. Yeah. So I'll pick some up. And we're going to start with this one. And I'm going to drag the water across. Yeah. So wherever water is, paint will flow, yeah? So a few lines across. I'm not going right to the edge of the shape of the beetroot because that will already predetermine exactly where the paint can land. So I want a little bit of wiggle room to move that about when all the paint's on, okay? So first one, I'm gonna start with, let's start with cadmium orange, yeah? So again, I lay this out in a line, I move the brush across so I can get liquid paint. That's what I want, okay? Where's the sun shining today? 
I think it's just over there. So it's coming in this way. The top of this beetroot is going to be the lightest area. So I'll just flick a little bit of that across. And you can see already really where I went with the paint. It carves out the lines of uh, water and it leaves the dry patches in between, which allows me to give some dimension and direction to the shape of the beetroot. Cad orange, a little bit of cad red. I place this at about halfway so it can bleed either way. Because I'm, I'm flat on the surface, it will go either way. It's not tilted, so it's not just running down to the base of the uh, um, painting. Two colours on. Let's get a bit of, a little bit of mauve. Same thing. Again, placing it this end, away from the sunshine. A bit like where I live at the moment, that's very much away from the sunshine. Mm. We're trying to get some imported, but I think there's a, there's a bit of a shortage, a bit of a shortage. I think that's a bit unfair, Andrew. We did have a few blue skies yesterday. Ah, blimey. I must, <laughs> uh, I must Google them, John. I've not seen them. <laughs> it was one day out of the 365, but, you know. That's, oh, blimey. That's, that's, we're being spoiled. We're being spoiled. A um, little bit of purple there, just this far end. And now I'm actually just welding, melding, pushing the colours together a little bit, yeah? Taking the all the colour off the brush and then tying a bit of water. So this idea of um, using water as a, a great conveyor of the paint that's on there, very useful. Don't think you've got to put paint on your brush every time. Think about just using a bit of water to move things about. Yeah, And it'll also soften the pigment you've got on there. So you can put, put quite big clumpy areas of uh, pigment down and you can soften them up and move them about all the way through the process. So there is light to dark, Brian beetroot, all ready to go. Now I've got my small dagger brush now, a little bit of a line of water along there, nothing much at all. I'm just going to repeat a couple of the colours. So we'll go with a little bit of uh, cat orange, drop that into the line. Just round there. A little bit of cat red. There we go. And a lot of this is sort of automatic painting. Really. Once you've set it up, it will just start bleeding about, finding its own way, and you can go off and do something else. Uh, sometimes I go and climb a tree and uh, come back, and there's a fabulous painting there. So it's uh, ideal, ideal for a part-time job. There we go. So that's bleeding down again, all just working its way around. Interestingly, I don't stretch the paper because I'm, I just work in areas, i.e. this area, and the uh, rigid paper around, the unsoaked paper around, keeps it in a uh, more static form, so it doesn't cockle too much. It's when you soak everything, it rolls up um, far too much for me to actually work with, but breaking it down into small sections tends to work a lot better. So beetroot number one, Looking okay, looking okay. Before I move on, I'm going to put a few little dobs of colour on. So I'm going to go in with a little bit of purple. And you know on beetroot, or I know on my beetroot that I've tried to grow, you get little dots, little bits of texture on there. All I do, texturization of beetroot. That's an individual class on its own, I think. But little dots, and they'll just bleed out and start to form texture within the liquid shape that we've got on there. Would you ever consider doing a bit of splatter on that or would that be a little bit too uncontrollable at this point? No, I'm, uh, I, I do splatter uh, quite often on the work, uh, John. It's I, If I do it too early, 
when it's too wet, it will just bleed off into the background, which is quite nice for a very muted effect. But I tend to leave it till the latter part of the painting. So it actually remains a bit more static. And I know it's going to go. I can control this a lot more. And I also noticed when you did the, I don't know what you call it, the tail of the beetroot or the stalk oh, or whatever. Morning, yeah. yeah. Yep. And, and you started with the lighter colour. You didn't connect it to the beetroot at that point because you didn't want the bleed in. But you, you exactly. connected it once you added the darker shade. And I guess yes. you do that in layers, basically. Yes, it's that's I can I can almost section it two sections and then bleed as you say bleed it together. Otherwise, particularly with dark colours, I put the light colour on, save the little stem there. If I have a nice big roll of paint coming from there, it looks nice for a few seconds, but it just overwhelms everything. So that little it's I look at it as a little gate. So I control it and allow it in when um, when I feel fit, and that's just due to the. Pro the drying process. Yeah. The longer, the longer it is, the longer you allow it to wait, the less it's going to roll until it gets to where it's dry and it's not going to go anywhere. So it's purely controlled by time. Mm. Try a second one. A few lines across. There they go. Try not to touch that one. If you do touch that one, what we've got is a special method. Put your finger in it. It's a bit like if there's a, a, a leak in the bath, you put your toe in that, put your finger in and just move the finger across and that will stop the, uh, the flow of the paint going into the next one. So you can control this painting all the way through. Just repeat the method here. We've got uh, cad orange. Use those little lines of direction just to guide A, the water in the first place, and then the paint. Okay, a little bit of cab red. And there it goes. And I'll actually move to my smaller dagger brush now because this is big brush is quite clumsy on uh, a small area. So keep considering which brush to use all the way through the process. Don't just continue on with the the one you're holding. Although the larger the brush, the better really, because you're not having to go back 10 times to pick up the paint each time. You're, uh, you're getting the stuff on quickly. And you're, uh, you're not repeating the method. You, speed, speed is off the essence in the initial stages. So a little mini Dave there, just scooting around. I can flick a bit back. And now I'm just bringing it up to the edge to negatively pick out this front beetroot. A little bit of water on a uh, small dagger brush, scooting around this top edge. Again, where I'm placing water, the pigment will roll to. Maybe just very lightly and delicately, or it may just rush over there, depending on what, which colour you've got on there. A little bit of cat orange, Indian red, a little bit of mauve. Okay, so there's two all complete, and again you can you can just see the drying process now here, semi dry, little few wet patches. That's fairly wet still. That's going to roll about, and you can still do stuff with that. Do little dots again. I think it's the Leicestershire soil that allows these dots to <laughs> jump into the beetroot so often. <laughs> Okay, number three, are you ready? Bit of water, curve that over. Bringing it round. Now then, the light is going to be really this top end this time if we're completing the idea of the light coming from the top uh, left.
Cat red. There we go. A little bit of mauve. Again, just bringing that round, showing those little lines of description and a bit of purple. We even had a few of those dots early on. And it's great just now to watch the paint blend together. I think this is what attracts people to this sort of style so much it just looks so uh, effortless and easy which once you get the, the idea it, it does become that i think the uh the slight problem people have is they overthink it and i've always thought that when you start painting art you'll 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 go into a certain method you're by the way you're taught, who you're taught by, your perception of what's being said, whatever it may be. But the thing is, you'll have a method that's successful. You may want to get the change the style, but um, you know it works. You know when you're going to do a painting, particularly if you're painting in a group, you'll want it to be, you want it to look decent. You want it to look good. So you'll stick to a method that you know that works. So to actually break away from that can be quite difficult because you're throwing off the uh, all the learning process thus far and trying to say, you know, I'm starting from scratch again. And um, so you have to be quite brave. And I had to do the same. I used to be a bot botanical illustrator. So I was, I was very tight indeed. And that took some, uh, some movement, some uh, real conscious decision to not paint like that for quite a considerable time. So I've been through the same dilemmas of uh, how to uh, get looser in my painting. And simplicity really is the key, particularly to start off with. Don't overthink things, place the color down, let it move about, see what happens. Learn from your own um, experience, really. When you're, when you're looking in textbooks, it's difficult to translate when something, particularly when it's quite a chaotic way of painting, but this appears to be. But when you're, uh, when you actually take notice, sit back and take notice. And don't aim for a fantastic painting every time you sit down. Aim to learn, aim to discover. It's a good way. It's a good way. Right. And so how long you a, were you a botanical artist for, Andrew? Um... Only about 25 years, John. <laughs> <laughs> I would imagine each one of your illustrations probably took a little bit longer than your looser styles now. They did. They did. I, I, th this in the botanical style would take me at least a week. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, Shall, it's, it's, is now a good time to stop for the, at the halfway break, do you think? I think it would be, John. I shall just move my... Uh, there we go. Perfect. Oh, Perfect. Good. We can see you again now. Um, brilliant. Well, now, while we while we stop for a, a halfway pause, um, what I, I like to do at this moment is ask the artists that we're hosting to just share a few paintings that they've done in the past, just to give us a little bit of inspiration. And we'll also talk a bit about uh, the upcoming workshop event that we've got planned as well. Um, have you picked a few to uh, to share? I've got a few for you, uh, John. Yes. Real. So um, let's have a little let me, look. Let me put it on. over. Where's the best place to put it? Okay. Let's have a little look. Right. Okay. So here we have a uh, a street scene. Great. Yeah. Where so whereabouts is that? Well, um, really, it's 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 a. Um, amalgamation of imagination and reference, really. So I'm, I always think sort of European sunlit streets, uh, evening time, that sort of thing. Again, it's back to the method. Once the method is in place, 
you can you can bring ideas together and i always think a painting is a story and yes. you want to depict the best story that you can you can achieve and i i paint outdoors quite a bit just in the open air and when you actually look at real life buildings whatever it may whatever it is street scenes they never really measure up to what could be um your your ideal city street scene or something like that yeah. so to really push the story um we really have to add our own take on it so when you're looking at reference don't get drawn into it too much try and visualize the end result before you start and aim along that route so this really for me is sort of uh, uh maybe paris somewhere like that uh late it reminded evening. me of that building on the right actually reminded me a bit of harrods actually in knightsbridge so i, I don't uh, know whether that was the inspiration but i love that domed roof in the in the background that's lovely just yes yeah it's it's the edge detail that is only the important pieces really within something like this all of the central area um is just suggestion light suggestion there's no heavy work there at all yeah. and it's, it's it's the corners the little little uh flicks out that really try do describe the uh, the scene so, uh, but I love to get lost in these and something like this would take me maybe half an hour, something like that. Yeah, but again, fantastic. botanical, uh, that, that could have taken me longer yeah, than months. It, it, it to build Paris. Really. Yeah, no, it's uh, it's it's an amazing technique working loose with watercolour because you, you, you do it in such a way that the eye of the viewer fills in the detail. So you don't have to do that, do you? Uh, whereas illustrating something as a, a botanical artist, you you basically there, there's nothing left to the imagination. You are doing uh, it as it is. Absolutely, yeah. Yes, you, you, that's absolutely right. It's you you give the viewer the privilege of contributing to the painting. Yes, they all see it in different ways, as we do in life, and yeah. um, we we agree to disagree sometimes, or vice versa. But when you're just viewing an image, sometimes it resonates so strongly with you that um, th there's no need to confer or defer to others for their opinion. If you love it, you love it, and it just hits the mark. So uh, yeah. Yeah. that's what this sort of uh, approach does with me. Yes, lovely. Um, I've got another quick one here, John. Uh, this is just uh, a little daffodils, uh, just placed out with a ball of string. And again, it's just when you actually look at the detail, I always, I always think um, when you're looking at a detailed image, when you get close to it, you can, you can see all the detail. But when you're far away, it looks quite blurred. You can't see the detail. In reverse, when you're far away from a loose uh, painting, you think, oh, there's so much detail in there. But then when you get close to it, it's, it splodges and marks and and obviously undetailed areas that the viewer puts together and i think that's why it works so well but it's it's the total opposite of the detailed style but mm. it still works uh, so well so again this was just a very very simple thing um again it came out almost like we did the beat group just throwing on the colors see where it took me and then just embellishing it when the painting has uh, told me what to do and it sounds a, maybe a bit of a woolly phrase, but it does do that. Things just appear to you. The longer you look at it, the more you can start to see things in there. And that's where you dive in and you can add little bits and just tweak it a bit. And that's enough. That really is enough. And, and so, do you plan your paintings out, uh, a simple um, a painting like that that's quick, do you plan it out before you put paint to paper? Or do you, is it through the sketch that you're doing it? Or how is how's it formulating for you? It's, I, I, would, I would say the, the initial inspiration has got to come from a, a quick, um, some, something just strikes you, something just hits you, and that's what, you've got to capture it. You've got mm -hmm. to capture it. And I think you, you, you could get the information within seconds, because if you go away with that thought, that emotion about the subject that you're trying to depict, carry that through. Don't be looking at the um, looking back for the detail and the reference overly. And then you can use the method just as we've done with the beetroot there, light to dark, just build up the colours, build up the, the uh, scene, build up the emotion of everything, and then just pull it together towards the end. 
Mm. But dive in and just be adventurous with your work. That's that's what I would say. Mm. And any others to share before we? Talk um, about I've the just workshop? got one one last one, John. If we could. Uh, oh, lovely. Go on, go on to the screen. So these are peonies. Yeah. Um, again, same method, but a little slightly tighter to describe the object, describe the peonies. Um, but again, I compare this to how I used to paint. This again was the 30 minute uh, uh, whirlwind as opposed to the 30 hour um, slight breeze. <laughs> I think I think you've got the values in there really nicely inside that that uh, bottom right petal. It's uh, really draws your eye to it, doesn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Yes. Yeah. Little bits of information are enough. It's yeah. uh, I always compare it to a conversation. Uh, you, you people can talk and talk and talk and talk, but you get the information within a few words. Really, the rest yeah. is rest is trying to sell it too much. So. Uh, for me, less is less is far more. Yeah, no, I totally agree. That was brilliant. Thank you so much for sharing that with us. And didn't they look amazing? And let me know in the comments which painting stood out to you and why. And um, I also find it fascinating. Andrew does the the flow of the viewer's eye really well, I noticed, in those paintings. So if you're watching a recording of this, go back and have a look at um, the buildings, the cityscape one again, and notice how it, it takes you down the, the ridge of the roof line, down to that dome, and it actually journeys your eye around the painting, and then the one with the ball of string, and it kind of carries you up and through the diagonal up to the, uh, the top third, you know, working in thirds on focal points so really really uh really well planned and it obviously got a, a, a natural <laughs> gift andrew well done um and if you're uh, watching this on youtube enjoying this art class we'd both really appreciate you hitting the thumbs up it then recommends uh the video to more people and which helps us in turn with our mission which is to inspire more people to give art a try young and old alike so thank you in advance um right we're going to go back to andrew now and we're going to have a chat about the upcoming work workshop and what we've got planned there so andrew i think we're doing a daisy with some ladybugs is that right just move that john for you. uh absolutely john yes we've uh, it's a beautiful little spring summer scene um again when you look at the image it looks complicated but it's, it's not at all it's very very simple um it's a beautiful one to do uh, everybody could achieve this quite easily just even on a first lesson it really is um, attainable by everybody. It's just a matter of learning these little steps, um, sticking to the steps, because believe you me, little ideas will pop in. You'll think, I'll do this, I'll do that, I'll do that. Um, by all means do, but if you learn the steps and then do that and then compare, and you might see where um, this might work for you in comparison to maybe how you may have been trying for quite a while. And I know a lot of people try for a long, long time to get loose. And the harder they try, the less loose they are. So yeah. if you follow me, we'll go totally the other way. And then in my uh, uh, forthcoming workshop, I'll show you all of the methods, plus a uh, more detailed uh, approach to the drawing. And I do a sort of pre-drawing even before the drawing. So we really get all of the little uh, ideas uh, honed and hammered out and really after that I believe you could easily go away and uh, have a go at things yourself and I think you'd be quite amazed I know a lot of previous students have said uh, they were they were stunned and surprised <laughs> how, how easy it was because they had these little guidelines these little steps so uh, if you pop along um, I think March the 14th John I think it um, is yeah Tuesday yeah Pop along again, uh, come and join me and let's see what we can do together. It'd be good fun and uh, I'll show you everything I know. Yeah. Yeah, brilliant. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. And as Andrew said, it is it, the workshops because we have a two to three hour time frame gives us chance to, I, I like to say, go off piste really with our uh, art and explore different things. And as Andrew said, it will do uh, pre sketches and other little things just to highlight certain techniques on that step by step process. So you should all be able to follow along. We go at your pace as well. And um, you can either join us live on the day on the Tuesday, the 14th and or purchase is the recording as well and as a reminder if you're one of our patrons level two and up you automatically qualify for a discount i think it's 20 percent actually in this case uh, and to claim it simply click the link on our website events page 
Uh, to visit our website, you can either click the YouTube pop-out link, which should appear just here. Uh, sometimes it doesn't, but if it does, there it's there, so you can click on it, or you can see uh, links in the description below. I'll also share my screen now and show you how you can purchase. So if you visit our website, shopkeeparty.com, and uh, click on the events tab at the top, and then if you scroll down, you'll see Andrew's upcoming workshop, which is just there with the ladybugs and daisies. Click the event details button. And that goes through. Uh, that's the link at the top where you can then go and, and purchase a ticket for the workshop or the video. And it gives you all the details and shows you the reference painting and sketch and things like that. Go through to Andrew's shop. And I'm just right in front of it there. I don't know how to get out of the way. Click on the uh, item there and uh, you can either book the webinar and video or just the webinar entry. Add it to cart and then go and check out. And when you check out, it is in pounds, but your uh, after checkout, your local card issuer will convert it to your local currency wherever you are. Uh, in the future, if you do purchase the video, head over to our videos library and you'll be able to search by artist, uh, pick Andrew from that drop down, and you'll then be able to play it time and time again to relive the workshop and pick up anything. Because sometimes when you watch something again, you'll pick up something new. So hopefully that helps. Right, let's go back now to Andrew for the second half of the tutorial as we start to bring things together. And I tell you what, I'm starting to feel a bit peckish actually painting these beetroots. Um, back with you, Andrew. Thanks very much, John. Right, okay. So uh, the beetroot now are pretty dry, yeah, all right. dry all flowed about. And again, we've got uh, roll bags, we've got little balloons in there, um, but they work for me as the texture. They really work well. And again, people dive in there and try to remove those. But again, you, you, it's damage limitation, I always call it. What you've got to do is just go with the flow, see what it says to you, see what it offers you. Right, okay. So we're going to get, we're going to get all the uh, leafage on for a start and then we'll get stems on and then a little bit of detail onto the actual beetroot uh, the cells and maybe a few recipes in there uh for john we can uh, i, I should have that. combined this with a cookery program as well that would have been absolutely. perfect wouldn't it um it would have been abs <laughs> an absolute <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. We, we, we had right. a, we, we've had a couple of comments from some of the people watching. Uh, Alessandra said, uh, loved your cityscape painting that you showed and couldn't believe that it took you only half an hour for the, the cityscape. So talented. Um, uh, she, she loved them all, but the cityscape was definitely her favourite. And then Roberta said, love the peonies as well as the cityscape. I'm familiar with him and it's great approach to things in this manner. Thank you. So uh, there you go. Love, lovely feedback. Well, very nice to hear. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Okay. Leaf time. Big Brian, big round ended brush, water, clean brush. Always clean your brush quite often. Get the pigment off so you know exactly what's happening on the brush. Again, big strokes of water, leaving gaps. Think what you need to do is act like a leaf. Yeah. Act like a leaf. Think about the curls and the swirls going this way, this way. And these will be picked up in the paint as we put it on. Yeah, I'm leaving dry areas around the uh, stems. So we'll put those on in a few minutes. And again, I'm going to start with uh, lemon yellow. Nice and liquid. And all I'm going to do is just do that. Yeah, very simple. Place it down. Place it down and just drag it a little bit. Yeah. We're trying to get the essence of light hitting foliage. This top edge, and sometimes it bounces down a little bit further into the uh, into the greenery. Uh, second colour, sap green. <clears throat> and I I don't really pre-mix the colours. I just take them straight from the tube, and and I I do use uh, the tube paints as opposed to the um, pans because I can control the thickness of the paint. With the pans, I'll just get a clogged brush each time. So I'm not exactly sure what I've got on there. Placing the sap green down just like that. And there, and there. 
leaving little white gaps as well. These are nice little fresh light areas within the uh, deluge of leaves. Little taps when I get to the edge. And I always leave like here. I don't use masking fluid. I just allow the paper to show through. Again, putting the brush down, swirling it round. Don't over swirl it because you need a license from uh, the uh, the uh, entertainment agency if you're going to swirl your brush around too much. So just within limits, within limits. Right, got those on. I'm going to use a little bit of cerulean blue now. So I'm using this as I call it a shadow color. So nicely mixed again. Then a few little swirls in there. And again, it's just pressure on the brush. Yeah, small areas, very delicate, little bit of pressure, big areas, pushing down with it. And I'm thinking about where the light is not getting to. So it's under here, between here, around this back end, because it's furthest away from the light. That's all that's depicting. Looks like a big swirl of uh, greenery, which it is, but then we do just pick out little bits later on. Let's say later on, in this style later on, in maybe two to three minutes, that's about it. Perilene green, dark green, pushing that round. Just in there, view in the center, not too many, don't overdo it. Put a, a bark down, just move away from it and allow the eye to digest what it's saying, what that new mark, that new add-on is uh, offering the painting, okay? Now, Alessandra's asked an interesting question. Do you ever tilt the paper? Because you're obviously doing it fairly flat at the moment. Um, good question. I No, I don't. Um, because they're all contained, mm. this, if I did this, all of this would run down to the bottom. By placing it, it will only disperse around the area that I placed the mark. Yeah, It's all very obvious when you think about it, but... If I tilted it, everything would go this way. It would it would look nice for a while, but the the placement of the paint would be lost. Um, so no, I don't. Yeah, I think Alessandra, that sort of works better for landscapes or when we were with uh, Renato in Brazil last week with the the ocean underneath, almost where where gravity <laughs> to the eye is taking effect in your landscapes. That's where that can work really well. But um... Yeah, when it's contained, I think, as you say, Andrew, I think it's uh, it's better when it's flat. Yeah, yeah, it it works better in 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 my in my approach to, without that movement. But by all means, um, Alexander, do experiment because that may be a style or maybe an add-on or a twist that really yeah. works for you. So listen to what I say, but add things on as well, and also sort of uh, question as well. It's a good thing because that will develop your individual style um, for you, which is, this is, that's what art's all about. Paint for yourself for a start and paint for others as a secondary thing. A little bit of uh, purple. I'm just gonna drop this in as well, just in the darker reaches of Leaf Town, which is here. And now as I go back in, I'm just finding some dry edges just here. Look. And you, sometimes you only know which the dry edges are when you actually touch them. They won't bleed, obviously. And it just starts to pick out little shapes within the leaves. Okay. So we've got all that on. Um, I'm gonna let that dry fairly much. And then I'm just gonna go back to the beetroot and then we'll put the stem on and a little bit of shadow. So I'll just put a little bit more uh, Cerulean blue out. And there's a line of blue rather than a dot of blue, easier to get to. I'm going to start with my rigger brush. And we're going to go with, let's go with a bit of mauve. And again, um, I like the rigger. It's a great brush. You can get so much description and quick flick lines. If you use a small brush, you're delicately doing this, you're doing this and your paint's gonna to dry too quickly. 
you lose the benefit of the flow. Right, okay. Uh, move. All I'm doing now is flicking a few lines over. You can go either way. Sometimes put a bit more pressure on. Do half lines, all things are okay. But again, if you notice how I hold the brush, I don't hold it close to the end. That will lead you to detail. We don't really want that, do we? We want to work nice and loose and easy. So the further away from the, uh, the bristles, the better, yeah? Little lines. View just down the uh, the tail of the beetroot there, and then I push some of the colours together, just dragging the brush over. That's a really good effect for the texture, isn't it? It works really well. Yes. You start off with the water, then you put the paint on in the same uh, style, following the line, and then just picking those out, and it, uh, it does it all for you. I'm just going to twist my uh, paper a bit, guys. Hope you excuse me on this. But uh, difficult angle to, I'd have to uh, do a backflip to try and <laughs> put the lines on in the other way. Okay, so again, place the brush down, aim and fire. Now, and if you're not confident to do this straight away onto the painting, just get a little bit of spare paper and just do it on the side and get used to it because initially you'll try and control it. But I almost do it like I do the uh, drawing, and that is put a dot down, another dot, and aim for the dot. I have a little game where I put it on a bit of spare paper and try and uh, see how many I can score by putting a dot there and a dot there, and try and hit the dot, yeah? But it gets that control or just enough control, that's all you want. Uh, still mauve, still little flicks over. Don't have to do dots all the way on this, just little ones, because these are like stepping stones. The viewer will see some there, there and there, and say, I know what that is. But he's not overtold the story, he's not put everyone on there and allowed uh, me no, no input at all. Okay, second one. Twisting again, guys, twisting again. This one was a little straighter, as I remember. Again. Remember, we're just coming from the side of this uh, Brian the beetroot. Again, dragged across. A few more, a few little dots. Taking the colour off the brush and just pushing it about a bit there. I can easily push some of these together. Okay. So there we have the beetroot lying in uh, in wait for maybe a salad. Right. Let's get the stems on. A little bit of water in a couple of lines. Now I can see that bit of greenery there is quite wet still. So I'm staying away from that just for a moment. I'm going for, with still the rigor brush, I've got cat orange, lights coming this way. So these top edge uh, stems are gonna be the lightest. Again here. And maybe the top here. But I'm gonna burst these into the greenery, but just driving those over the top. Tad of cad red. Would you consider using a, a bright or something to do a bit of lifting out of the green so that that could just penetrate in? Or I guess you um, could just experiment with something like that, couldn't you? At some point? Yes, no, I do. I do lift out as well, John. Quite often I'll just, I'll show in a moment, I shall pick some out for you. But we've got, uh, I quite often just put a bit of water down and let the uh, pick off with a bit of tissue and a nice hazy area. Mm. On, where the uh, pigment's been lifted, that works quite nicely. And again, a simple method for doing it. The, um, I don't know if it's just me, but uh, I always remember 
reading a phrase that uh, I think Bill Gates said. He said, if you want something doing it in its most economic form, give it to a lazy person. <laughs> because they will find the simplest route to get what you want. So uh, I would, I would say uh, maybe, maybe that's the category I can fall into, but it, it, <laughs> it's not a bad analogy. It's not a bad way of thinking about it because you can overcomplicate it and you'll still get the same result. So, yeah. uh, so we've got the stems going in, just into the uh, foliage there. Now, just to dip back into the greenery, and again, it's still wet in places. Let's lift a bit off just here. I've got mini Dave just with water on. A few scoots of water. Then a little bit of good old kitchen tissue. Just dry. dancing over the surface. Maybe a bit just here. Again, and I don't press down on the tissue too heavily. I'll just lightly tap it and it'll pick off a, a sort of smoky suggestion of, uh, of lightness. To go in and pick out underneath and pick out a couple of leaves, let's go with well, sap green, a bit of perilean, sort of half in between. So I'm just pushing around the edge. And it's a bit like I said about the top of the building. It's the, this little suggestion, this description of the edge of leaves that will be enough to allow the viewer to start to see a little bit of detail working in there. Bit of darkness falling in. Running around this way, so just negatively picking out. We we'll try a little bit further over here. We started something here. And just to run along the top edge of where the root stems hit. A little splodge in between. Then water to run some off the back edge. And pull some of the colour around. So this, the colour you pull around with the water is going to be softer. So it naturally bleeds it off into a, uh, a gentle transition rather than a, a harsh uh, edge all the time. Pull in a little bit of the uh, purple down into the stems. It's a natural suggestion of a shadow just Hovering over the top there. Bit in there. And again, each everybody's paint will always look different. You will never get two paintings the same in this style. I suppose that's one thing about um, uh, if somebody commissions you to paint something in this style, they have to... Uh, you almost, you can't commit to it being exactly their uh, imagined idea, if you get what I mean. It's, um, I, people say to me, oh, could you paint my house? And I say, well, I can, but it's, uh, it's going to look like my interpretation of your house, not uh, your interpretation of yeah. your house. Yeah. So uh, I have to make that quite clear. So we usually we usually talk about the, the commission over two or three bottles of wine, John. That's that works. 
<laughs> yeah, while, while they sign a disclaimer. <laughs> absolutely, yeah. yeah. The signature's a bit wobbly, but it's, <laughs> but it's uh, it stands up, it's okay. Right, so just a few little lines in there, nothing much, just to pick out a few edges. Just along the top edge, to soften some edges, a bit of water again. I want to pull some of this colour out, just onto the white paper, into the colour, and allow this to flow a little bit. It gives a nice soft edge. So just tapping, dabbing the colour in. And uh, just pushing that out. And again, strong colour, soft, gentle colour. Even that as a little exercise. Place some colour down, let it dry, go back with your brush, bit of water, and just start moving it about. See what happens. I think you may be pleasantly surprised. And that then really lovely. It's really coming together. Just finally, I think we'll put a bit of water underneath there as a little shadow. <clears throat> I'm going to use a larger dagger brush. Like I say, use appropriate size brushes for the area you're working with. You don't be fiddling about with little brushes. They feel clumsy, really, when you're holding the bigger brushes after using smaller ones. But the purpose is to get things on, and the clumsiness is quite a useful thing because you can't control it as much as you'd like, and that actually is a benefit. I've dragged a little bit of water across there. I've actually put a bit more. Again, lines. And if you're not sure if this is dry or you don't want it to bleed in, just take the water close, but not right up to the object. Again, where I tap the surface, I'm just tapping out to see where the water is. I'm not lying on the table looking to see where the glint of the water is. I'm just an educated estimate, that's what I'd call it. Again, all these things just add to this surprise of the approach, the style. If you know what's coming, it's not quite as uh, exciting as I didn't expect that to happen, but I like the result. I like what the uh, finish is. So I think it's uh, that's an element of this style as well. That's uh, unpredictability, exciting, and uh, you don't always win. You don't always win. I've got a, I've got a, uh, I've got a, uh, a waste bin with um, more than one project that didn't go quite as I initially envisaged. But I did learn something every time. So a little bit of that was cerulean blue, guys. My apologies. Just dragged lines across. Just suggested where the shadow may fall and again it's not it's not a template exactly the shape of the beetroot it's just a suggestion to hold it down and uh, let it uh, let it flow so almost there john one last little bit if i may so for those about to splatter i salute you with uh, miss rigger um we'll add just a little bit onto the beetroot i think we'll use mo again and again, if you've not uh, tried this splatter thing before, just put your finger down, forwards up, not onto the nail. That could be a little bit of an uh, expensive trip back to the manicurist. So just there, hit the ferrule. I put the brush in the direction I want the splatter to go. So a quick tap, hold the handle of the brush quite a way back. And I like it just falling into this still liquid um, shadow colour we put down. I even just splatter with throwing splattering water on because sometimes the little blasts of water will disperse some of the paint and find a new um, bit of texture in there. And it's all these little exciting bits that. You know, you just don't know what's going to happen, but you've got to, you've got a reasonable control, reasonable idea of it. Very last thing, sorry about this, guys. 
drank a bit of water, threw some of the splatters, pulled some of that out. Yeah? And that becomes part of the scene as well. There. Brilliant. So, I think that's uh, beetroot buddies have arrived. They are <laughs> Well, I, I think that is lovely. And who would have thought you'd be able to have such such great fun with uh, three beetroots? Who would have known that? But um... uh, No, not me. Not me. <laughs> <laughs> no, really fantastic. Thank you so much. And how did you get on at home? I'd love to see what you produce. And as we near the end of this show, if you've got any words of thanks that you'd like me to pass on to Andrew, please write them down for me now. Also, uh, as I said before, Andrew and I'd love to see what you've created, your paintings. Um, the link to the relevant Facebook post can be found via our website class info page. Uh, or if you're one of our patrons, simply add a photo of your art onto our WhatsApp group. Um, and Andrew, it was really fascinating. Thank you so much for sharing that time with us today. It was it was really lovely. I'm really looking forward to the workshop. Absolutely. And so am I, John. So uh, I look forward to uh, meeting you all at the workshop, guys. And um, thanks so much for uh, taking the time out today to drop by to uh, to join me. Thank you. Thank you so much. And uh, Alessandra said, um, thank you, John. I couldn't agree more. Who would have thought that painting beetroots would have been so much fun? And Sharon said, lovely departure from florals. Such a lovely painting. Uh, Mary Jane said, thank you. Fun project. Looking forward to the workshop. And Lenny said, loved Andrew's demo and his sharing the steps so clearly. Yes, I echo that, Lenny, actually. Uh, Andrew puts his uh, his teaching uh, method methodology and, and talking aloud, because some artists find that quite difficult to do, you know, as they're painting, to talk the process through. But you've, you've got it down to a fine art, Andrew. Thank you very much. Thank so, you. Um, so until next time, it's obviously goodbye from me, but obviously thank you so much again to Andrew. And uh, a big round of applause, I think. Oh, my word. <laughs> oh, oh. Oh, my God. <laughs> I'll, I'll go back to your art. Thank you, Andrew. Bye. My pleasure. Thank you. Bye. Absolutely. Bye.